Hello everyone and welcome back. If you've been watching the videos over on Northern Seclusion, you know that I have been uh, boiling sap and making maple syrup. And today, I, this is the last of the stuff that I had uh, collected over the weekend and now it's warm out so the trees aren't going to run for a few days. And I would like to make some maple candy. Some of this is going to be syrup and then some of it I want to boil down even farther and make it into maple candy. I've been going out every day and collecting the sap and then I made a new sap evaporator so I've been running that and boiling it down. And this right here is the ending result almost of 20 gallons of sap. Twenty gallons will usually make eight half pints, so you can see I've boiled down a lot of sap. When I took this off the evaporator last night, I take it off at 216 degrees and then run it through a pre-filter and then I just brought it inside because it was time for bed. And that's how you do, um, do it when you're doing the maple syrup. I'll pull it off at 216, I'll bring it in here, and then it's supposed to be, well, 7.5 degrees above what the temperature of water is boiling at your house that day. Barometric pressure, all, everything plays a part of that. But normally, 219 is about what syrup is but I've been checking it with a hydrometer and I have been having to go to 220 for it to be um, perfect in the hydrometer. Every single time it's been 220. Right now on my little instant read, which isn't all that instant when your hand's in a hot pot, I'm up to 217.5. So once it gets to 220, I'm not even gonna check the hydrometer this time. I've done it too many times. I'll then run it through the filter, and then, so like I said, some of this is going to be syrup, and then we're going to make some maple candy. For the maple candy, I opted to buy two of these little uh, maple leaf molds. I didn't see, I, uh, I had to get something that could get here in just a couple days off Amazon, so they have other ones that are like log cabins and stuff also. And you don't have to have the molds, you can also just pour them over a, like a piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet and um, just let it harden and then you can just break it up into chunks of candy. You're going to want to lightly spray this with some cooking type spray because um, it'll make it a lot easier for it to come out. Some people will add butter uh, when they're making the candy, I'm not going to. I just want pure maple candy. Uh, it also gets a little bit longer of a shelf life if you don't have the butter in there. As the sap gets closer and closer to being syrup, you can tell after a while just by the way the bubbles are. They're kind of glossed over and closer together and almost a little foamy and you know it's getting close. I would show you, but if I put the camera in there, all it's going to do is fog up the lens with this pan. Okay, let's attempt this. Right now it's at 219. Can you see how those bubbles are there? Ah. When it gets to this point, you have to continually monitor it because it'll get up to 220, and then if you're not watching it all the time, it'll burn and become burnt maple sugar really fast. We are now at 219.5.
Well, we just hit 220, which is what I want for the syrup, so we're going to dump it. This is a, I don't know if it's called an Orlon filter or whatever, and then there's a pre-filter inside, so it's getting double filtered right now. It takes a little bit for that to filter all the way through that because it's a pretty thick filter. And to make maple candy, you have to use pure maple syrup. You can't use, um, like if you, you know, when you buy in the store, it uh, has additives in it and stuff. It has to be pure maple syrup. I actually bought some of these maple syrup jugs. Yeah, I didn't buy a whole lot of them, but I bought some before I started. And then I decided I wanted to do it in the jars because it's such a change from the beginning of your sap season to the end in the different colors that your syrup will turn out, which is very interesting to me. Um, this has a real nice amber color. This is much lighter. But uh, it would be nice to send down at least a jug to Melissa's mom and this would have travel in the mail much better than um, glass. I wouldn't worry about it nearly as much. Supposed to turn it on its side for about 15 seconds to make sure that this gets sterilized and and uh, it seals correctly and then it's done. Well, I'm going to need two cups of syrup to do one of those uh, things of uh, candy. Boy, I don't know what I got there. I think what I'm going to do is fill up one of these because I really, this is the fourth or fifth batch and I want to do taste test throughout all the batches so that's a nice color. So we probably have, I don't know, two and three quarter cups in there, which is good. I will, uh, I'm going to have some lunch and then we're going to cook this down. I wonder if I want it in a smaller pan. How am I going to, well, the thing is, if you have a too small of a pan, it'll bubble over. If you have too big of a pan, you have a hard time when it cooks down being able to tell what the temperature is. And we want to bring this to 235 degrees to make the candy. I'm going to have lunch and then we'll figure it out. Well, I've got it back on the stove here and boiling by now if you, you got to keep it down low and slowly boil it otherwise it bubbles all the way up and it wants to go over. We'll just heat this till it gets to 235 degrees. Right now it's at 229 degrees. All right, it said 235 and then it jumped to 235.5 right away. I was gonna dump it in this pan, but I don't think so. I thought I smelled that it burnt a little bit, but I think it must've just been a drop that got on there from my thermometer. Now we have to let this sit here and cool until it gets down to 175 then we're going to whisk it and um, you know some people say up to five minutes but you really have to watch it or it'll turn into sugar and you'll lose it now it's just slowly going down now that it has gone down I do think I'm going to put it into this smaller pan
Now we're maybe five minutes later. I've just been trying to get dishes done in between here. Oh, well, we're at 182 and it's still going up some, but it's dropping pretty fast. Get a couple more pans done here and I think this will be ready to mix. Look at how it just sticks to the bottom now. <laughs> it's turning into pretty solid. Well, we've reached that 175. And now we want to mix this until it gets lighter in color. Almost sounded like until like air starts getting into it, which could take anywhere from three to five minutes. I read one story. I've made this years ago, but it's been a long time, so I was reading on it again, and somebody said it only took them 30 seconds and it was ready to go. So that if you wait it too long, um, it'll set up on you, and you won't be able to get it in here. So I think this is about right. It got a lot lighter. Definitely sweet and very mapley. <laughs> That's pretty good. Don't know if I'd want to eat a whole bunch of that at one time. Wow. That's pretty good. Well, I guess we'll let that set up. See if we can scrape the bottoms or whatever that is of the maple leaf ones. That was pretty neat. When I was about halfway through, I thought I'm never doing this again. It's too much work, but now that I see it done and tasted it, <laughs> I'm sure I'll do it again. Well, these actually come out pretty easy and no reason to scrape that bottom because the sides just break right off so it turned out really nice. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. That's how you make maple candy. It's very sugary. When you put it in your mouth, it like melts in your mouth. It's pretty neat. Well, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let us know if you guys actually try this. It really is good. <laughs> see you guys on the next video.